Okay, here we are again. Let's write a very simple Mumps program. Let's write a program to add 10 numbers. Uh, now, in order to do that in my version of Mumps, you must use an editor and write an ordinary ASCII file. In other versions of Mumps, they have other ways of doing it. In my case, it's an ASCII file. You can use any of the editors. I prefer to use uh, VI. I had already done some work a moment ago, but as you can see on the screen, well, we can clear that off and start fresh. All right, uh, VI, and I'm going to call it uh, add1.mumps. You don't have to use the uh, .mumps extension, but it does kind of help. Now, the file is going to be just an ordinary text file, and it'll contain mumps code. The question is, do you want the file itself to be executable, or do you always want to type the name of the interpreter in order to run the file? It's easier if you make the file itself executable. And if you do that, you have to put a special line at the beginning, which is typical of Linux programming. The line tells the Linux interpreter, bash in this case, what to do with the file, what to run. And the line looks like this. It's um, into input mode. I just typed an I. Uh, pound sign, exclamation point, slash USR, slash bin, slash mumps. That's the address of the mumps interpreter. And when Linux sees this file, it looks in the very first line, it sees that pattern, it says, oh, I know who to give this to, brings in the interpreter and gives it the file. All right, so we are now ready to go. We'll have to do something else later on in order to make it executable, but at the moment we're okay. All right, we're going to read 10 numbers. There are a bunch of different ways of doing it, one of which would give you, get into a loop and set it up to read 10 things. Well, right away we need some looping software. The looping command in mumps is 4. So I will type 4, i equals 1, by 1 to 10. It's the starting point, increment, and ending point. Um, read uh, a uh, set x equal to x plus a. Uh, I kind of forgot to put initialize x. x is going to be my accumulator. Uh, x equals 0, okay? So set x equal to 0 and then read 10 numbers, and that's what it is. Each command in, in mumps uh, begins with a keyword or a letter. Some, the, most of them can be abbreviated to one letter, which makes the code very difficult to read at times. Then there's one or more sets of arguments, um, and uh, there's a space. The space is a delimiter. We do not put extra spaces in mumps code. Even though it might look nice, it won't work. The only time you can have spaces is where they're required or within a quoted string. Okay, so what we're doing here is we're telling it, oh, by the way, c uh, commands can't begin in column one. If it's in column one, it's a label. Column one is for labels. Any other column, you can have a command in. So I've spaced over one character. So the first character is blank, meaning I have no labels. So I set, that's the assignment statement, the variable x equal to zero. Well, where'd the variable x come from? Well, you don't have to declare. As a matter of fact, you can't declare anything in mumps. Variables come into existence by their appearance in a set statement or a read statement or a new statement or some others. They technically, they're called commands, but we'll call them statements too at times. All right, so x is created. What is x? What's its data type? Well, all variables in mumps are essentially strings. They behave like numbers and truth values and so forth when they're used with operators that think that way. Uh, so x is a, basically a string which happens to have a number in it. Um, the for loop, again, you've got the variable i. It's created by virtue of appearing um, in the for loop. Uh, it, uh, it initializes to 1 and then increments to 10. Uh, let's see. The variable a is created by the read command. Read reads an entire line. It will read an entire line. So we're only going to have one thing uh, on a line, one number on a line. Finally, the set command there adds into x the value of a. I suppose we'll probably want to write it out. So after we finished right after we finished the loop, and the loop only has the scope of the line. The way I wrote it, it's only a single line scope. So that um, read and set command will be executed 10 times. And after they're done, I want to write out the result. And I'll say the answer equals quote, uh, comma, um, x, comma, exclamation point. 
And what that means is, of course, it's going to write out a n s equals. Then it's going to write out the value of x. And the exclamation point in a right statement means new line. It'll cursor will go back to the beginning of the next line. So I go out of um, out of um, input mode and I write uh, out the file. W Q is how you do it. And you can see here I have three files: the data.dat from the previous vid video and add1.mumps. The problem with add1.mumps is that um, it's not executable. And by executable, these are the codes. I did an LH, LS dash LH. LS dash L would have been sufficient, but the H gives me numbers in with Ks and things like that rather than actual values. The, these are the protections if you're not that familiar with Linux. The first group of protect, the first one is something else, but the first group of three here, that is the users. That's my protections on the file. I can read the file and I can write the file. The dash is where the execute goes. There's no X there, which means I can't execute the file. The second group are for the group, second group of codes is for the group I am in. Uh, of course, I'm in a group of my own, but anyway. Um, and the other people in the group, if there are any, can read the file, but they can't write it and they can't execute it. And finally, are the protection codes for the entire world. The entire world can read this file, but they can't write it and they can't execute it. What I want to do is make it executable for me. And we use the command chmod for that. chmod user plus x. There are different ways of doing it. Sometimes people use octal. But user plus x is the user. It adds the execute privilege uh, to the file. And I type the name of the file in. And now if I do an ls-lh, you'll see, bingo, there's the x. So now the file is executable. So all I have to do is notice the dot slash add1.mumps and it's running. I didn't put a prompt in. That was silly. So I'll just type 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. All right. Well, let's try 10. Um, those were the, the it, it was reading them. Now I hit enter and we get the answer, 55. All right. Isn't that interesting? Let's put a prompt in there. Um, and that's a shorthand in Linux to bring back the previous edit command. So instead of that, the read command actually allows you to put a prompt in. Um, uh, let's put it as a write. It's kind of confusing if I say write. Um, uh, let's see. Number, comma, I, uh, comma, um, blank, space. So what that says is before it does the read, it's going to say number, and it'll give me the current value of i and a space. And then the cursor will hang there waiting for me to type something in. OK, it's ready to go. Write it out. And we, I'm hitting up arrows. Uh, we run it again. Um, I'll say 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. And there's the answer. So we've done a couple of things. We've written a short program that does, in fact, do what it appears to do. Uh, it adds the ten, uh, first 10 numbers. Is that the easiest way? No, you could do it some other ways. Uh, we could go back in here instead of, um, why don't we ma just make it no upper limit? Probably unwise. Uh, for what i equals 1 by 1, I've eliminated the upper limit. It will keep doing it until I tell it to stop. And then it reads in a it did the same thing as before. It'll read in the A, but right here, I could say quit. Uh, um, and the colon means if in this context. I equals empty. And now, a couple of things have happened here. We're using something a little more complicated. What that's going to do is the quit command, which will quit the four. It'll terminate the loop. will execute if I is empty, if it's the empty string. Uh, well, I don't mean I, do I? I mean A, uh, X, or excuse me, A. Okay, fix that. Sorry. Um, it'll quit if A is empty. I, of course, is not empty. It's the value of the, of the increment or the index at this point. Uh, if you do this, um, that is not the A equals quote, quote, is a conditional. It's called a post conditional. It can be attached to the command. It is not an argument. Therefore, afterwards, we have to have two blanks. Two blanks are required. Two blanks are required after a post conditional if there's something else on the line, and there is. So this will keep reading numbers in until I hit just carriage return and no, no entry value at all. 
So I'll get out of there and we'll run it again. Um, I just keep going on randomly typing stuff in and it keeps reading and so forth. Um, now if I hit enter, just plain old enter, you see it stopped and it gave me the total, 419. All right, what if I wanted the average too? Go back in here. Um, uh, X uh, input uh, quote AVG equals um, X divided by I uh, comma. Whoops, um, uh, AVG equals um, quote comma, excuse me. Um, we have to have the, there's the quoted field. It's a string, average equals, and um, then followed it by will be the value, whatever I, uh, X divided by I is. Now, um, I will actually be one higher. So I should, because it was attempting to read, let us say the 10th element when I hit enter. So I is going to be 10, when in actual fact, I've only read nine. So perhaps I better um, uh, set i equal to i minus one in a previous line, or I could have done it in the expression there. All right, so it decrements i, so now we'll get an average. And now I'll run the program again. Uh, just random stuff, no matter what I type in. You can check me later. Um, all right, hit enter. And there we get the average. And you'll notice it prints it out to some arbitrary level of, um, there's a default level of, um, of precision uh, this can be changed all right so that's the um, so that's a short program to read numbers in what, what are there other ways um, yes there are ways that would involve keep reading until end of file that is probably more the likely case so why don't we create a data file um, I'll call it file um, one and uh, in here we'll just put some numbers whoops yeah All right, so that's a file containing 10, 10 lines, 10 values. Okay, that's a file. Now the question is, I want, to, uh, I want to run that against the program. Now, as it turns out, that won't really work because with the way I've set up the program, I need a blank line at the end. And so there's a blank line at the end. Um, cat displays something, file one, and you can see there's a blank line at the end. So that should work. So if I say add, one, whoops, top slash, add one, um, it'll fill it, I hitting tab and it fills in the rest of the line. If, it, if I've typed a unique combination of letters, it looks around, finds what, what could possibly it be. And then I redirect file one as input. What that means in Linux is means the program, when it attempts to read from the terminal, it will instead read from the file, in this case, file one, that less than sign. Greater than sign are, it can be used to redirect the output. But anyway, um, well, it, uh, it, that's fine. It, there's the answer and so forth. It, uh, however, you'll notice that there were, um, the prompt was still coming at me uh, because the prompt means nothing to the input file, but the prompt was still coming out. And since the prompt depended upon you typing in a number and enter, entering, hitting enter. Um, the prompt never had any new line characters after it, so it spills across the page. We could uh, kind of fix that. Um, uh, back here, just by getting rid of the prompt, because the prompt is meaningless if I'm using it with the, um, all right. God. And we'll run the same thing again. And uh, you'll see, just get the answer then, which is the correct answer. It read them all, the blank line was sufficient. What if I don't want to put a blank line at the end? <coughs> what if I wanted to detect the end of file? Well, that's a relatively simple change. It's quitting now because, um, whoops, um, hit the wrong key on the keyboard. Um, it's quitting because it's seeing a blank line. We could have it quit because uh, quit if, whoops, it's an idiosyncrasy here. Um, quit if dollar sign test uh, equals uh, zero. Dollar sign test is a is a mumps uh, program wide condition code. It tells you whether something has worked or failed to work. 
Now, in this case here, the read is an operation. We're trying to read something in. And if the read fails, dollar sign test will be zero or false. If the read succeeds, dollar sign test is true or one, indicating we did get something. So in this case here, when it sees the end of file, it will, uh, dollar sign test will go to zero and um, the, uh, the for loop will terminate. Now we need to go back uh, to the file here and get rid of the blank line. Blank line actually, the only thing it would do is change the count of i. It would count as an input, but empty strings, empty strings are considered to be zero. So it wouldn't have changed the actual total, but it would have changed the count of the number of things I read in. So now we'll go back to the same thing again, and uh, you see it worked. This time it detected the end of file. All right. Uh, can we uh, come up with other variations of this? Oh, of course, there's no limit. Let's go back into our, um, into our, uh, what if I, this is reading it because we redirected the input. We took redirection of, of input instead of the input coming from the keyboard, it was coming from a file. That's pretty standard. What if I wanted it to actually come from a file itself? It's a little advanced, but why not? Uh, I would need to open a file. Open uh, one colon. Um, well, now it should be. Um, well, we'll halt it there. 